RLM 309. You think you made it through winter and you made it and it's okay now, huh? Yeah, well, the winter that you're facing is still on its way. And it's not stopping. And it isn't going to stop until you stop it. And it ain't going to take you just sitting there thinking that you're stopping it or knowing so much in the world about how you, how you think it ought to be. This is going to be the, it's going to be the constant theme, I think. Whether I stop talking about it or not, it's going to continue. People are this way. You won't step up. You won't do a thing. You'll complain until your well, until your fingers are tired at the keyboard. Instead of taking all that typing and put it to something of use that would have stopped it. See, lots of still continues. Lots of complaining on the internet. Tons and tons of complaining. And I look at the th look at these situations and I see. Well, they're not even doing the process that's available. No, they'd rather just complain of the the problem. Last week I said we are now figuring out how to address tr cap and trade. What you've heard is the green jobs bill. Uh, what you uh, know is um, going to be the new uh, green, new deal, the green new deal. This one affects everybody, folks. I've been anticipating all this. I told, the, I told my colleagues, I said, especially in the states that got the Democratic majorities, watch out, here it comes. You all don't quite get what I've been saying to you all. This is affecting your life. Whether you see that or not, it's going to start to destroy you all. And you had the chance to stop it. So I guess my broadcast is becoming this chronicle of how a nation never stood up for itself. And I always professed that it was it was uh, uh, rights and bra bravery and freedom and land of the free and all this other stuff. And then mocked it as well. Never really believed it. And that's why you're not stepping up. You know, I always speak in generalities, never in those guys. Those of you that are stepping up, great. I appreciate that. But you know that we're not enough. And so I offered, we have a line in on how to get you right into this cap and trade. You better jump in. Hope you find some interest in it. Find a place to jump in with this, wherever, federal or state. It's already in the states as well, but no one sees that until you see it. you got a steep learning curve in order to stop it, but it's all stoppable. And yet I got zero emails. Zero emails saying, what do I need to do? I don't know much, but what can I do? And I kind of given you a short list and said, okay, you find yourself these things in your state or federally, and you start sending letters. You say, what does it matter? Well, there's a process, and it starts to matter. I'm amazed at how, how it does matter and where we become effective and how we focus our correct intention and attention and we cause this we cause this nonsense to stop and if we had more of us we would have the ability to overcome and overwhelm it. But this is coming across the nation now. And I've said for a long time, I said they, they're only having to give us administrative due process because they still have to to tippy toe around property. Well they're about ready to take all that property, so then they won't have to give you due process. And if you think executive expedience under under the uh, indefinite detention and all this other nonsense I've been talking about on the what appears to be a foreign level is that tough. You wait till it drops home in, in your house, right in your house, folks, because you didn't step up and write a simple letter and then keep dogged on it to stop these people. And it was all stoppable, which is a, really the uh, the insanity, and that's what they're using, the license. Your silence to stop it is, is you're okay. And I don't care how many complaints that you get. I don't care how much you, you say or how much you excuse it. Listen, your memification of the social net media, your chatting in the rooms, your discussions amongst yourself will not stop this thing. Your engaging this thing improperly will not stop this thing. So, there's really only one path. Either, really, there's two things you did to do. Stop whining and complaining and go find a, your thumb to suck on somewhere in some cave, because they're going to show up there anyway. I found that out. It doesn't matter if you go off off in the wilderness. They're going to track you down because this is a round, spherical globe for all you flat earthers. They'll find you. There's no edge to find and go crawl underneath to look over the bad, the bad ice land to get underneath where they can't get you. And so there's a way that there, there, there's a you have to address an invasion. There is no, um, what is it, uh, I hear all the time, uh, Oh, I don't even think about this stuff. It's a, such nonsensical things in application and reality. A non-aggression principle. 
How do you know the one coming against you that sit, sit in your living room isn't coming in aggression? How do you know that that's not a plan to take you down? And so if you don't set up a, a, a rule set that, that causes a distinction somewhere, you become the horde. You become what comes over on you if you survive. You know, I keep trying to explain to people, the United States, for all of its faults, did have a couple things in land. And the land was given to the people or um, trusted to the people, and not in the way we're hearing it today, but actually in possession, to the exclusion of everybody. That's never happened that I can find in the history of the world of man, ever. And this is what's being destroyed, the property. And I've said long time, if you don't understand about property, you probably are property. If you're just talking about and complaining, that's what the that's what the other side, the, the side that's moving the agenda in in all the warm and fuzzy, non-aggressive looking moves. They're they're coming to take your life, and they're going to take it in a way that's a continuing parasitic feeding from you whether you're having a good time or a bad time whether you're feeling safe or whether you're they're just actually uh, having their way with you or the, the ultimate civil right your your death all your civil rights your pain and punishment your pains your penalties given to you all at once in the execution by cop the military that's imposing all this so I'm a lot disappointed I've been disappointed a bit I've been excited a few of you step up uh, and it's it's a slow thing. You got to kind of pay attention to how they draw it out. It really is an incremental process. But those of you who jump in, you start to see that there's avenues. I know there has to be because we're doing a lot of the things and we're working out the problems on how to address all that nonsense. And every time we we set uh, set against the the oppressor, we we can stop them. Whether or not we absolutely stop them is the problem of of scale. And this is an incremental, this is like a four, dealing with four, stage four cancer, seems to be in the news more. I wonder if that's not a consistency. It's a train wreck. It's a slow motion train wreck. And we're on the train. You know, none of us walked up to the conductor and said, you know, go tell the engineer. And if you're not going to tell the engineer, I'm going to go tell the engineer. Uh, slow this thing down and let's get, so we don't run it off the track. No one ever did that. When we found out we had four, stage four cancer, we all started doing uh, panicking and deciding, well, well, if we do the memification, we're going to win. Oh, well, if we rely on the Fourth Amendment, a uh, Second Amendment, we're going to beat this thing, not realizing we didn't beat it the first time we used it. And this is not your you, all your Second Amendment folks. You think that what ought to be in the Constitution, what is up against us will not be killed by a bullet. I don't think people figured this out. You know, people have really sunk this thought, sunk this through. You're not sunk in it, folks. And so, notwithstanding all that disappointment I had last week, that nobody stepped up to say, what can I do? What simple letter can I get into? Because I'm not so smart about this. I want to be intelligent. Smart's not intelligent. That's where they're going. The smart cities, the smart this, the smart that's not too intelligent, folks. Just found out if you get an app for a smart uh, car uh, thing, I can't remember now what it was, it, it's all hackable. Hackers can control your car, see you, listen to you, everything. It's all, keep getting into this, this smart life here. Don't resist it at all. Just keep sitting in your computer typing away your letters and complaining and moaning and, and fighting amongst yourself. And I'm going to, again, I'll be the, if this, if these files ever, ever stay, ever last in, into the future, it'll just be the chronicles of how a, a people allowed, allowed their destruction allowed someone to rule over them. Everyone who thinks that they're free or they have a free and a non-dependent thought is a liar to themselves. It's a hypocrisy in face of an attack. And in a way, I've said it before, I'll say it, I haven't said it in a long time. Anybody who hears what I'm saying, I don't, and I, I don't really care whether you agree with me or not. Everyone who hears it, I'm condemning you because this, I am telling you, that there is a thing you can do to stop uh, an invasion that's been happening this entire time. It, it, guns won't stop it. Your complaining won't stop it. Your dismay against it won't stop it. Your criticisms against it won't stop it. It doesn't care. It does not care. And it's really got a couple of focus points, Achilles heels it, but we attack all the time, and it, where we where we can step in and attack it, it stops. It, it goes somewhere else, and the fact is that there's no one else in the other spots quick enough to cover it. And so the metastasizing cancer is across this country. 
and it's rolling out really fast. And some of you are all engaged with 5G and this and that. That's just a small part of the implementation of the whole. That's fine. Jump in there. But you find out when you jump in, there's been a lot of people working on how to get it where it was. And yet I keep coming every week to say, here, here's what you take right here, right now. Grab this, make evidence, make a record, and be there to be the stick in their spokes. And while you're there, tell other people how to do it right so they can be the stick in their spokes. And so you get lots and lots of people coming, even though they're kind of ignorant of this totality of it, they're focused on doing something that they see wrong that they need to make right. And they work to make it right. Not the way they think they need to get it done, but the way it needs to be done. And that's all, that's all written down for us. It's not that you even have to make this stuff up. So, I don't know why we don't, I don't have the interest. I don't know why everyone makes excuses. Uh, and again, excuses won't even handle this. I don't care how many excuses you have about what you can't do. This stuff is coming on you. You're going to be radiated and wonder why you have all these cancers coming on you and whatever else is coming up from all this radiation, all this nonsense, and all this intrusion by the cops beating you up because now they hear you everything you do, see everything you do, can, can, can control everything about your life through things you already have in your life. Already, you've already ex accepted the uh, Trojan horses. I see the Trojan horse coming up a lot. The Trojan horses are in your life, or you've accepted them into your into your castles, folks. It's really kind of a pathetic look from one at one point, from my perspective. And you all had the chance not to do a thing, and so it's. Uh, I can't say it hit me hard. It, it didn't even hit me until just near the end of the week, where I'm thinking about how do I get, what am I going to do for the broadcast this week? And I realized, well, no one even took, nobody took up. Even to engage the thought, to accept some information that I could give them in a direction to stop something that's going to destroy their life. Not one of you. Now, my colleagues, we're working on what we can, but we're too small a footprint, if you will. We have no infrastructure like they have. We have no, no um, influence that way. We have a few people that are working really well in seats the decision. But that's the limit of what we can do. We are making the example of how to do it, but we're not having a, a mass enough. I told you it was going to take more of a mass of people to do this. That means every one of you. We all have to grab onto the rope that's tied to the edifices of power and pull it down because it's grown up and we were, it was our responsibility to have no one above us that way. We were all equal, not in the social justice way, but under law that had been co-opted by a private foreign group of people called the Bar Association and their types and their names in the courts if you want to search back farther into England and they co-opted your world now I'm not so smart I didn't know about it up until just recently well let's see maybe a, three decades ago that's recent isn't it and I'm still talking to you all like uh, to crickets it's just that's all I don't even know what to say more we see how they came in and invaded it. We see how they run down our lives. We, I tell you, they told you they're going to bring this, what they're now calling the Green Jobs Bill, the Green New Deal. I told you they were bringing it in. They're already supporting it. It's actually called sustainable development. And you're going to hear all kinds of names covering this, this cancer, this additional cancer. It's even more now. It's like the, it's the, the death, the death blow coming. They're even referencing the New Deal. Has anybody sat back and thought about what the New Deal did to the country, the United States of America? What it actually did? The dynamics and politics of that time? Everyone brings up the Depression. They say it ended the Depression. Do you know your, your whole financial, your whole monetary system was de debased by 40%? And that's the model. You're going to watch an economy that's no longer based at all in anything substantial, debased even further by punitive impositions claiming every one of you is a criminal. And I already told you how they did it on the military side. They're going to do this on what they're going to cover up for the civil side. It's all the same thing, but you, you all think it's different. It's the same thing, no different than I can tell you. The, the criminal side penal, penal penalties are not much different than the civil side. You're still l criminalizing life, and then you're the state, the power, the one with the paid for the guns that you pay because you don't resist right, they will see, sit there to make sure that you're going to always be underneath that thumb. By whatever color, by whatever myth that they'll tell you that you want to buy into. It's all about the buy-in. It's all about your consent through that. And then uh, you haven't realized, if you don't listen to me so close, they made presumptions against you, and so you don't have a standard that you can say, I'm not underneath that. I don't consent. 
you're presumed to consent. The very fact of you going anywhere before a seated decision to say, I haven't consented, they'll laugh at you say you're an insane one. And then you don't even know that they did that presumption that you have consent for your benefit. And so it's not just as easy as uh, waving a flag or waving a non-flag and, and, and saying, I haven't consented or I'm not going to agree or whatever this or I have my own philosophy on life. They don't care. These people are, are occupiers. They don't care. As long as it doesn't threaten them, they don't care. And the level of threat is being, the threshold of threats being dropped down to where now they're just, now they're coming in your house and killing you. And so I went farther than I was going to go on this that way, but I'm, as I start thinking about it, I really don't think about this stuff until I get here, and I've got a general idea where I'm going to go, but it usually seems to kind of get altered by the time I start talking. And I start thinking about it, I'm really getting kind of annoyed. Not kind of, I am annoyed. I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. It's a little creature. It's an N-O-I-D. Yeah. One of those. We are losing this, folks. I just told my colleagues, there's not enough of us. We're losing this. We're losing this in so many ways. It's we don't, it's not that we can't win it. We just don't have the grasp wide enough. And there's nobody, nobody else there to help. And you uh, miners, you, i got something to tell you as well. You know, I told you they're taking away the property. Once they take away the property, once they don't even deem you have property, they don't have to even give you administrative due process. And I want you to maybe sit back and think about that after a while. When you don't have the right to any, at least in your civil domestic life, you, you have to have some... But under NDAA, you found out that they take it right away. Even your civil life is turning into a punitive condition. You are already deemed guilty just by your existence, and they will exact from you in any manner they want. And this will have all been brought on by you right now for not uh, addressing it while you had the chance. So notwithstanding, no one responded to the, the offer that we could, I could show you those of you can pick up this uh, the impositions that are coming down as punitive taxation and regulations against you in every state in what they call this cap and trade or this uh, green jobs it's a section it's an extension of a worse extension of the new deal which debased this united states a lot of people think and say it, it brought a bankruptcy upon the nation there's all kinds of stuff it, it did for sure that i'm not quite so sure because we still had what they referred to as based money back into 71. And I know now, looking back, that anything based in gold or silver, stuff out of the ground, is a property that cannot be taken in on the debt side. And we hear that from the, go to the Federal Reserve website, and they'll tell you that they take gold and silver as asset, not in their debt side ledger. Ledger. And a digital ledger is just blockchain. So what? You're not that far away from all this stuff being rolled up, are you? But they can't enter monet a specie into a debt side a, a de a ledger system. And that is another indication why I keep telling you about getting your keeping your silver money, your gold money, keeping an alternative the the original your your, your organic condition going and it's going to make it, you have a lot more things you're not tying into the system that can be used as a presumption against you. Then what you find is a direct corruption of the system that every, they, they try to sh tell people is actually the, the law. It's actually just a rule of law that's actually the occupier. And you have to throw down, cut out the rule of part and show that they had no authority to interfere with the property side. And they won't recognize property. Or Again, it's over and over and over. If you were ever in this stuff, you'd see how they're doing that. It doesn't make it right, but it, do, it, 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 cleans, up, it cleans up the matter quite well, actually. It, it, it outs everybody as a, in official capacity as a criminal. As those felon, uh, the felons, I, I tell you that, that they are. When you go look at your extortion uh, statutes and your coercion statutes and your conversion statutes in your states, the, under official authority, when they don't really have a right to a property or an interest or whatever, an pertinent right, they're they're a criminal. Every time we pre we present that, we back people off. And that just if they're not going to say so, then we know that they are, right? We don't have to even worry about it. And this is what this system that's bringing on this process, it's bringing on this new deal that I offered last week. We have information on. We can help and guide anybody who wants to get into that because that's like a major thing. That's another layer of, of perpetual, sustainable servitude, slavery on the whole of the country. That's every one of you. 
you not really, I don't think you all really appreciate this problem. But everyone, none of you will escape this one. And it's going to come on some quicker than others as the, as the bureaucracy starts to ramp up on what they do. And I've got evidence it's already starting to happen in certain places, and it's evidence of how they're going to start to treat you. And they're not being nice. They're already telling you they're not going to be nice about it. But notwithstanding, nobody responded on the information on let's get you started on uh, those of you that, uh, it's boring stuff. I don't like cap and trade. I don't like carbon this. I don't like all that. I, I hate all of it. I hate every bit of it. But it's necessary to do. So you got to look past yourself. Uh, quit, quit sucking your thumb and saying I got a bigger, a bigger job to do in the world. If I don't, if my, my, my sons and daughters and my family, uh, I think it's going to come down a lot quicker than everyone will start feeling it. Well, within 20 years, and it's going to start to be really brutal if you survive. And it has nothing to do with wanting to kill you off. They want to make you. You want to. They want you to resist so that you continue to be something they can parasitically feed from. And the way they do part of that is they get it through what you engage in and what you need, and they also do it through your landed property rights, and then you didn't know you had any property rights, so you gave it over to ad valorem commercial taxation. And then you never stated anything else. And so you are opening your doors to your the, the, the exclusions that, that were given to you and your landed property rights. Uh, are You are handing them over. When you don't, when you don't stop them, it's pretty simple. You don't even realize that you've been invaded already. You don't even realize that even if you have a non-aggression principle, they aggressed you and you didn't stop it. And when an aggressor aggresses you and you don't stop it, they're not going to stop. It's like this is the thing I have the main problem I have against all these people. I'm not aggressive, but don't don't attack me. Don't don't do things that don't you don't have right to do or. Even if you think you have right, might be questionable. Don't do that. There's a reality in the world, and unless you accept that and then d deal with it, we're all, this is all really done. And I think it's kind of done. I only hold out the opportunity that we're going to be, uh, in the last moment, we're going to, we're going to take that last deep breath and come back to, and then sit up and say, so, okay, stop that. But I don't even know if that's going to happen. But w that's my last hope that we get that last shock. But we're, we're too sedate anymore. We're, we're, lo we're lost in ourselves. We're lost amongst ourselves. We're lost in the principles of life. And we are probably, in my uh, looking around, we're a, we're a dysfunctional people, and each one of us is dysfunctional. But notwithstanding my offer last week, I'm going to offer you again. Here's another one. And it's consistent with the rollout of smart cities. It's consistent with the rollout of the, new, the green jobs. If you don't think that this uh, green jobs uh, bill and this carbon uh, tra uh, carbon um, trading system uh, cap and trade is not as part of this, then you're 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 got your head in sand again. I don't care who you, how smart you think you are, how sharp you are, how clever you think you is, you got your head in the sand. I know your your words mean nothing, your opinions mean nothing, nothing compared to what's coming down with all this. The, the things that everyone gets interested that's a, a part, uh, is a, a big thing, is really just a part of a bigger thing. That's why I say, just jump in. It doesn't matter what everyone's focus, their thing, it's just a, it's, it's like a tentacle on this, on this, on this many tentacled beast. 5G is another one of these things. It's going to help implement this whole condition. It's only a part of the green jobs. And I'm telling you, we have information on how to defeat that whole thing, but i got zero people stepping up. So I'm going to give you, let's take a little bit less bite, but a bite nonetheless. Uh, Dr. Martin Paul, the 5G rollout is absolutely insane. I thought that was good. Okay, he agrees with me. Now. He's a doctor. I'm a nobody behind the woodshed. We agree. It's insanity. And I've said, you cannot, dis you cannot argue with insanity, especially when it's got a gun. And a knife, and a hatchet, and a big shield, maybe even a horse, maybe a recurve bow, maybe a big horde behind that. You're not going to stop it with your opinions, you're not going to stop insanity with your thoughts, and your memifications, and your typing, and your fighting. And so we reach this point. What you're looking at is an insanity that's taking over the enveloping the world, and you're letting it. 
But Dr. Martin Paul says, it's P-A-L-L, uh, the 5G rollout is absolutely insane. Yes, for people that are thinking and critical and have the capacity. This guy offers, as a doctor, right, as a doctor, he's going to offer evidence, as I told you, you got to bring forward. Now, in the 5G, we have a particular problem. It's not really a problem just to 5G. It's in, in other areas, but the people that have been looking into 5G are finding this, and there's not many people looking in other, way, in other places to see this in other places. I have and seen it there, so I'm kind of anticipating when someone steps up for those areas. But 5G has a problem with the rollout on the federal side, which is coming from and through the federal side, so you got to be careful on this. But inside, the agency refers to a couple of eight other uh, entities for their sta testing standards. You have to attack those probably first and bring that attack and the failure of answer into the fold. And if you don't do it that way, they're gonna, your complaint about the harms won't matter. And the complaint, the, the assertion is that the, 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 the best science did not regard what I will predict is what Dr. Paul here is, P-A-L-L, -L, is telling you are harms that happen to you. Great risks for EU, U.S., and international health. That was a pretty neat statement. This is just a heading coming underneath this uh, video. Uh, very it told you how comprehensive what you're what I'm talking about and what I have been talking to you about in little bits and pieces or more totally in sustainable development. The risk is international, and the risk is to your health internationally. I'm speaking now to everybody that's going to ever get the sound of my voice. If you're on the earth, you're subject. He goes on, or the title goes on here: compelling evidence, and that's the point you're looking for: evidence, not your opinion compelling evidence for eight distinct types of great harm caused by electromagnetic field EMF exposures and the mechanism that causes them by Martin L. Paul, Ph.D. So, enough I have to say there. Since you didn't respond last week, I'm making, I guess I'm just blowing hot air here because no one's paying attention, no one's listening, no one cares. But for those of you that might this week, and you're focused on 5G or even to smart meter because it's all those are all tied together, but they're going at it differently, and you have to approach them slightly differently. And I guess when I tell you that, my mind says, see, folks, we're doing this stuff. We see how to engage it. If you don't understand their subtle nuances between how you engage it, uh, you're disengaged. You're dysfunctional. You're watching the train come right down on you. You're watching the engineer drive the train too fast around the corner. We're going to go off, folks. This thing's going off. And you had every power to run up and slap that guy and take and slow things down and start making sense of the world from someone who was insane at the controls. So this little article I wanted to point out, notwithstanding my uh, dismay of last week and non-response for 5G and for interested people, and I would, I'll just leave it at 5G for right now. There's a doctor that would give you eight points, and you can go read about them, you can figure out how, you do it, how you're going to uh, compile the information, and I would say you would attack the two agencies, that they're, the two entities that are being used as the so-called best science, and ask them immediately what they have researched on this and what they have found, and when they, have, they come back and say we either haven't or not or whatever, whatever their response is, you then look at that response and you in, look to incorporate it as a failure that the FDA is overlooking, and they have the duty to look at these eight evidentiary harms, and you can shut down this process and start to shut it down. If not, you give yourself a standing to go back into a court and do, I told you, it's an injunction. That's why I've been talking about injunctions. They're a four-step process. The federal rules say they only go, they're only supposed to, the answer comes in 14 days if you think this is a drawn-out remedy. Four points to put on a piece of paper together with your cause, how it's going to harm the entire world here, folks. Those similarly situated and the harm for those similarly situated is the is your the noble approach by this. And that's how simple your package approach is to stopping a lot of this. You put the threat that you can embarrass them through a court because they didn't do the most basic things. I haven't got to the law yet. I'm just talking about looking at the harms. So those of you that uh, might find some favor over the dry-sounding cap-and-trade or the, the hoopla around the Green New Deal, this is all the same stuff. 
You want to call it to 5G? Great. Jump in there. Here's a, a link you'll get at the in the blogcaster. And it will be eight more of all the all the other evidences I've told you are available to pull together. And now it's not just 5G. It's any other subject matter. It's the same. You approach it all the same way. I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that the subject matters are so different, I, this is boilerplate. You, this is copy and paste stuff from one one addressment to the other. It's all the same the same approach. It's all the same um, the counter weapon against the infiltration. And, it has, and no bullets are flying. That's the other thing. See, and and look at this. All you Second Amendment folks. I'm going to bring my second. You can bring your Second Amendment to where with this, huh, folks? The global, the global attack? You're going to do that, too. Yeah, you're, they got you in the wrong, you're putting yourself in the wrong mental space about how this all works. And if you think that, that, uh, I'm just, when I talk and I'm not, I, we're not looking into the future of what's going on, we can only see what we can see. As we see it, we can identify it even in the late moment. Uh, we're in a late moment. Now, I'm going to touch you guys that are all raw materials producers that use the public land or public domain as it attaches to miners. Again, public land is land to be disposed. Public domain is the land that's disposed. So when you see public land, even though the government said, the federal government says, we're going to retain it, the, fed, the definition says they had no right to retain it. And this is where the states were supposed to jump in and say, wait a minute, that part you did in 1976 under the uh, FLIPMA, that was unlawful. That violated our enabling act promise, or, or actually undertaking the obligations and duties. And this is where the states are, are amiss. So they're in breach of themselves, but you're not going to get it out of, a, out of a group of people that are in control that do not want you to have property, that does not want property to be explained. Uh, we had found out a uh, surprise, and I talked to you quickly, uh, some broadcast back that the Senate, this is the geo. This is the Republican Party now agreeing in the Senate, as a Republican majority in that in that body, agreeing to a massive public lands package. And I said at the time that it came in as a surprise that the Senate would even do that, the GOP would even do that. The massive public lands package is actually a theft of all the all a wealth, not all wealth. It's wealth in a lot of very valuable wealthy areas. In fact, they're withdrawing what I understand the number is almost 2,000, I told you, almost 2,000 miles of what they call, what they're going to try and call navigable, well, it ends up being navigable rivers, and wild and scenic. They're going to take, at least by the claims, uh, they're, and, and by practice it certainly is, uh, by the agencies and the threats, they're going to steal away 2,000 miles of mineral-bearing ground. And so for you miners, you grantees out there, maybe even mineral material miners, which are not grantees, not to the total land, but you're going to be affected too. They're taking the property. The mineral, mineral, mineral materials entrymen are like sand and gravel and then things like that. They, they don't have the land. They do have the minerals. So they're going to take the property of that mineral because you can't get it. Grantees, they're going to take the land because they're going to put this under withdrawal. And they're making bigger under this land package that was agreed to by the, the the Trump clan, the GOP, and the Democrats who have been pushing this whole thing to steal your land. They're stealing your land. So any of you who know that there's a, a big lawsuit going to the Supreme Court, uh, wrongly placed there as well. Uh, and I, so when you think that that court case is going to win, even if it wins, and they say, well, wait a minute, you did too much on the miner. The miner doesn't have to do all this, and you didn't have the right to take that part of these permits and this and that. Even when you win, once this bill goes in, you won't have a place to go file a claim. That's the method that they're using across the United States, not just in the public lands, but everywhere if you look very carefully. Massive public lands package passes the U.S. Senate, was the report I gave you back. I said then, and at our, our last meeting, uh, the mining, mining district meeting, this is going to go very, very quickly because the House is, is majority Democrats. It's, they're not going to even stop this thing. Well, here's the news, folks. This is how fast this is starting to roll out. They're going to steal the raw material producing wealth out of the public lands by moving it away in conservation. I've also told you, conservation as it's applied today, 
not as it started out in 1905 underneath the Forest Service, but as it's applied today, conservation is non-use. It's actually regulated use by the theft of your taxes to help NGOs keep you out under their special thinning projects and whatever tourism, which doesn't exactly turn out. Oh, them going to be they're going to be keeping you from kicking rocks over or wherever because you're not going to be able to go in under threat of severe penalty. But besides the fact you're all scared of the nature because that's what they also do in the schools, those little ones coming up. But uh, this uh, package passes the Senate, and we get the word now. It wasn't even three weeks. The House ran it right through. Why'd they do that? Because this thing is meant to steal wealth. Remember, they're bringing on and they want sustainable debt. They don't want you to have the ability to make wealth, reference wealth, uh, protect wealth, or anything. The United States Legislature passed a bipartisan Senate House agreement to bundle over 100 individual public lands bills. This is more like an omnibus act, striking a balance, they call a balance, uh, between natural resource use, public lands protection, increased public access for outdoor recreation, and community development. Did you hear anything stated about production? No. That's the elephant in the room, and that's what they just stole. And so, they're stealing the production. The balance did not actually balance to production. If you look at NEPA, they, this comes contrary to that balance that Congress already declared would have to happen. This legislation has been agreed by both the Republicans and the Democrats to violate previous laws. And the end result is that they're taking your capacity in the public land to make it public domain and yours if you're a grantee, a minor grantee, or to be able to go and use it for productive plant uses. That has also been supported by your states. You don't even know this. The process I speak to that we try to stop when we can find it and where we find it, and we do stop it at that point, and this is happening with the cap and trade locally in some states that are being coming through. We just shut it down. They realize, we, because we told them, we make the record, they're making, this is felony and treasonous, this act. This makes war on the laws of the United States and what the laws of the United States are there to do when you look at the land disposal side. It protects you all. Because remember, there's also a little a little interesting little corollary of the, of the statutes. It says when you interfere with someone's uh, chickens, with their mineral capacity, with their raw materials, you're committing a sabotage in the nation. You can find that under federal law. And so just by reading that, you should know that this is a big sabotage. Well, sabotage is in time of war. So you realize we are in time of war, as I've been telling you. And these people, the Republican Party and the Democrats, whether you're a liberal, MAGA, whoever, I don't care who you think you are, what you think you support, these two people are getting, these two people, these yeah, people are, corporations are people too. These two political parties, as it was set up to destroy us in the beginning, are destroying us now finally. I don't know how, to, how else to describe this whole thing. Uh, to show you that we were on the mark of this uh, years ago, and I'll say it one more time for all y'all, you think I hear them just talking this stuff. And uh, uh, To me, it's more like a, we're, we're laying the foundation of telling the history before it happened to show you that you had a chance if you'd have just stepped up. In 2013, we sued both both the Republican and the Democratic parties for moving through conservation and sustainable development through things like climate change to destroy this nation, to destroy where we sued in our district, uh, which is four states. We sued both political parties and the Bar Association. If you do. So this is how transparent this whole thing is. It, it is your government at this point. And now it's starting to, the wraps have been coming off, and now there's really not going to be much to stop it when we see the Republican Party actually helping and aiding this destruction that they call a balance. And then you look at the list of the balance that I said, the natural resource use. There was no use. The use is not conservation. That, that they, they can't even say that when they are dealing with the conservation. You notice that word doesn't pop up, but that's what's in the bill. So this whole this statement here is really kind of a lie. They get you to believe that they're actually doing all this. Natural resource use, public lands protection. Public lands protection wouldn't be the public lands protection in the wildlife, it would be in its productive disposal capacity. But they're not doing that. And you're, you're never going to hear this probably from anybody else. 
how this actually would lay out. When I read, like when I'm reading these paragraphs, they, they tell me oh, a wholly different, different ob- object of what's going on. I re- it's like looking at a, it's like having the glasses and, and they live, folks. I mean, just that, it's that straight up. And so the, both parties are destroying this country. We said that in 2013. They're not stopping. And there's no one that's going to support what we did because no one is, uh, well, if I can't get you to go write a simple letter, you're not going to support what we did in 2013. It's pretty obvious. And, and I'm not really speaking to mainly more, more than the, the grantees themselves. What a disaster. What a disgrace. It's shameful. Taking some, your responsibility and handing it to others or just not giving it up at all is disgraceful. And I, there's nothing I can do with that. I can just keep pointing out, you, you better get a, you better get a backbone. Again, I'm not talking to those that have it. I'm, I'm talking to those that you think you have it or you will disregard what I'm saying. Or you will excuse away or you will think it's not involving you. The two things I'm talking about today involve everybody. And you heard one of them, part of which the 5G is international. If you don't think we're talking, how they did this, folks, I'll, I still, I can see the, the mechanical infrastructure of it. How they actually pulled this off is really quite a story. But it's evil as heck. And it's it's really coming to your house. I told you this cap and trade, this thing called the new Green New Deal is punitive against you. Now, whatever they say they think they're going to do, you're never going to make green jobs. Go look at wherever they try to put green jobs and go look at, see the costs of things like electricity when they make green power. And they totally disregard reality that the, the, the material, the machines that they have to make in order to make so-called green power, which, which really can't cover the, the, the need anyway, are not green. In fact, they actually may be less green than the, what we're using now. But again, we can go through all the rational discussion, but we're not dealing with rationalities. Public lands package passes U.S. Senate awaits President Trump's signature. So, what I was going to ask all y'all, even though you didn't respond to me last week, I'll ask again, uh, send a letter to Trump and look this issue over and send a letter to Trump and when you find the withdrawals in the bill or you see that they're making wild and scenic rivers out of every place that's not, when they blame salmon and you go and you research and find that the salmon are not harmed at all from reports in science, but not the political science since the 80s and, and early 70s. No, the science from the 30s that was done. You see the fish are not harmed at all. Send a letter to Trump. This is the last. Those of you that are interested at all, those of you that may think you're going to go into a place to claim a, a mineral or go get a tree to cut for firewood or timber or you exercise your law, the law in your states to get five trees, all this stuff is being affected. You don't even know it's there, but all this stuff is being affected in your silence that you need to send a letter to Trump and say, don't sign that bill. It violates the obligations of the United States. It, viol- it violates the obligations of the United States to the raw materials producers. It interferes with the raw materials production, which is a national security threat. I just gave you three points. Can you write that down, send it to the president? Does it ma- Will it matter? I don't know, folks. If you don't send it, I know it won't matter. If you do, we can hope that a flood of letters will catch this last check. Off guard enough to say, wait a minute, we better look at this. And maybe he won't sign to steal your land away and put it into non-use. Non-use is a war crime. I, see, I, do people understand what I'm saying actually? Do you just hear it? Oh, that sounds like cool. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. And then you go back to something else. This is coming to destroy your country, folks. To give it names and we kind of dis, we dismiss it. This is an integrated attack, and it's international. So if you don't think the UN is involved here, then you got another problem. It doesn't matter whether it's UN. They're don't, this is coming. That's what I, I focus on: the United States laws and the laws of your state. It comes contrary to all of that, and your so-called representatives, these two political parties, are the agents of that change and destruction. And you have all the power to go in and say, because of that supposed 
representation, but the breach of it, you have every power to be able to come and show them and stop it. And that's literally how we usually do it. There's many different levels. I don't even talk about it here. Once you get into fiduciary breach instead of the subject matter they want you to argue about, you just open the can of whoop-ass all over these people. Once you then fold in the felonies on top of that, because they'll use an immunity, you just fold in the felony. You can't use that immunity as a, a, a shield when you're committing felonies. And then we find out that's actually amounts because of the subject matter to treason. You're making war against the people themselves and their own and the existing law. Am I just talking opinion here? Well, it may sound like because I'm not filling in a couple of blanks, but I'm not telling you something that I can't go right and go find really quickly. The other thing is, is if I why am I wasting time to tell you if you're not going to do it? And if you don't know enough to fill in the small little blanks I'm really not filling in, which is not really incidental, you can't write the complaint anyway, and you're not engaged, and you're just a hypocrite. I don't care what, who you are, what you think, how smart you is, what you think you do, what you think you get away with not doing. And so back to it. Massive public lands. Uh, anybody who's a grant to listening, you got to get a little bit wise on this information. There's a, and I don't know how fast this is going to work. This could happen when I, before, this could have already been signed. I don't even know. We're just, we don't have the, uh, the, the, the line in, the red phone to the president to find out. I can tell you we have three letters to him. He will not respond. For those of you MAGA want to believe, make America great again, he will not respond. He will not even respond to say he received our communication. Three letters. And we were talking when we wrote those letters about this condition coming on and he chooses not to respond to us tells you something else notwithstanding that let him know you all know that you need to see him not sign that bill that's destructive in the three ways that I have laid out and more that's just the three for this broadcast is to get something out so you know I have a word in my mouth you can have the same word in your mouth and more I'll get you started you got writer's block I gave you three I set it up in, uh, I also set up a bit of it in how you could perceive, how you do your, the perception to move through to have more. Public lands package passes the Senate, moved to the House, they agreed with it, it's going to Trump, it's at Trump's desk, I don't know how fast this is going to be, please, if you have any thought about America, about the lands, about keeping your, this nation to be, to fend off what we're cut, what's coming against us, with giving yourself the last opportunity to create wealth and not have, have to go for the sustainable debt, you've got to have this thing shut down. And where we hear this interesting problem, the government is cognizant of a problem within the value, the money, the specie, the value of the underlying metal that you find that's being withdrawn from entry in these lands that the Senate and the House now agree need to be taken away from you. It's not just taken away from you in possession, it's take, the production's taken away from you as the, the product of something made in the country that provides... I don't think there's anybody right now that... that I don't know of anything Anybody and everyone that listens and will listen to my voice doesn't use from raw but materials production from the country or as they steal it from others because they don't want to give it to us because they're doing this agenda. You all utilize raw materials production. That, that raw materials production and even getting it over to farmers only comprise for maybe 5% of the population and it provides about everything that you need in your life. It's actually everything except the stuff we steal from other nations. Because we're so special and superior. But this country, United States, has laws that give that to give that wealth to people. It's not given to other other entities or the government itself. In fact, it's precluded from the government is precluded from coming to steal it steal it. Notwithstanding what our experience is, the law precludes that. And until we get kick out the rule O and actually impose law, which means you have to bring your title to your property first and watch them attempt to not recognize it, which makes them a felon, until you get into that aspect, then you'll realize you won't real, clearly realize how they're taking you down the mechanism and then how easy it is to stop it. And when a lot of us are doing this, it's not going to be so easy to do the dancer 
because what's happening one in one area, one little court someplace, it's with the problem of the divided states and the divided districts. You have a hard time finding out what's going on, by whom, from whom, to really keep a cohesive understanding of the good objections, the good uh, evidences that show that we have a bigger problem than either the rifle can handle or or the, the internet as far as you, your complaint or uh, some meme. We read the value. What's really being protected here in another story, Congressman demands CFTC explain its failure to find silver market manipulation where the DOJ did. So we find an agency getting caught for not finding what uh, law enforcement did as a violation in fixing the silver market. For those of you that, you know, you knew what was going on, but how? And what was interesting in the end of this story, and, you know, again, I could read this stuff, but why? You know, you're either interested or not. If you're interested, you may already know about the thing. I'm, I'm trying to show you how you use the information. You, you can see that uh, right in the, in the story there's a quote, just to remind us of nothing else. It says, gold and silver are true money. And the CFTC has a responsibility to expose and punish those who seek to secretly manipulate its value. We'll see the, legis the Senate and the House, they just did it openly, so it's not a secret what they're doing to destroy this. The point is gold and silver are true money. The, the secret is here, in the open, that it's not digital, it's not fiat, it's not paper. And I've been asking you all, for as hard as it's going to be, step back into the metal money, the coin. We found out that uh, the, you go to the Federal Reserve, they'll tell you they have to take that as asset. They can't take it in a debt system. Therefore, it won't fit into the carbon market system either. And it's not carbon either, if you notice. That. If you want to start moving this forward, you have a way through. There's a narrow path through. You better pick up on it. You, you don't. I don't. I don't know. You better. You don't have to do anything. But then I don't know why I hear anybody complaining. And those all that would be complaining, why aren't you doing accepting? at least partially what I'm saying, to start moving forward to defend yourself. So in this story, we found out that an agency of the federal government didn't find the wrongs that the DOJ is showing you. When you get, when they finally get rid of this specie, this gold and silver property, when there's no law to protect it, when they finally get us an administrative, they won't do what they're supposed to do. We got, this is evidence. What do I expect out of this? Really nothing more than this is a notice to you that the agency world you're going into, which will then translate, transform to the global control, will be wrong, and there is no law enforcement. It's only because this one had law enforcement counter independent that we actually see that there was a wrong that an agency misses, and they generally miss it, and we have all the reasons why or possibly why. So very valuable to understand. It's a, it's a non-dependent alternative. It's not in carbon or any of that stuff. And we are choosing a society to not to not accept that. Go back to the future, if you will. What we were supposed to keep was into our future. Gold and silver is one of them. I don't mean just holding it. I mean starting to interact with it, use it, get back into that. I don't know how easy that's going to be for most people, but this is what how. The harder it is, is the more that should be evidence how deep, how fallen you are, how they've got you whole held in captive already. So, from gold and silver, a precious metal for finances, there's something even more precious than that is water, and that came up with to me is a little story that popped up just to hit, tell you of something that I, you know, I've, I've said before, that going up, growing up as a little one coming in through. Finally getting into chemistry and physics and the solar system and science, and that's where I wanted to go, oceanography, and just enthralled with all that stuff, especially the fact that we knew more about the moon than we did about our own oceans. That was just a, somehow it captured me. Wanted to get into oceanography, wanted to kind of do the Renaissance thing, but I didn't realize I was moving into a time when university was going to make specialists out of everybody, and you were going to make specialists in the way they wanted you to think. And so what I ended up doing is of really capable in chemistry and biology and the sciences generally they didn't like that as I'm moving in and so I didn't end up going in that direction there was obstacles placed in ways for people who had if I could say skills or talents that were different than the 
funneling through the specialties that they wanted to do. In fact, at the time, oceanography wasn't even a word. They didn't even really, un they, I mean, it was a word, but I'm talking academically. It was already starting to be a specialty before they even got to the idea. But anyway, so that was at the time my mind was uh, younger, and you got these uh, ideas, and it, it's kind of naive somehow, but there's certain things that connect up. And I've told you before, I, I got, took a little heat for having the idea when they were telling us then, and this is not many that many years ago, actually, but they were telling us then the only water in the universe is around the Earth. I've told you this story just a little bit. And I said, but if you look at the dynamic of the sun and the protons and neutrons and the energy and the whatever all is coming on, and you look and you see the moons out there without an atmosphere, you're going to have some chemi chemistry going on. You have a electrical energy. You have um, atomic energy. You have uh, penetration uh, with the neutrons. You have uh, with the proton uh, interactions. When you meet the molecules with that energy, you're going to be converting, you're going to make chemistry. You're going to make things. One of the things you're going to make is water. Why there wasn't water on the moon, I was a little surprised. Why there wasn't water in the solar system, I was surprised. Remember, at the time, they're telling us it's nowhere else but around the Earth. And so I took a lot of heat when I was young for having new ideas, if you will, but they weren't really new. If you just look, this logic kind of tells you that. I'm not going to say I'm bigger and badder than I was in looking. I was no no genius. I didn't turn out to be a genius. So I was I was limited, but I had I didn't know it couldn't happen kind of thing attitude. So you kind of luck into this stuff. So I've taken heat for quite a few ideas I've had that I've watched over my years slowly start to come out. Here's another one where gold and silver is precious to us. Water is even more precious. It's not as the as restrained to the earth as we thought. There is a dynamic that's natural that works all the time. And now we have the story, moon surface acts as chemical factory to produce water. Now, what does that mean to me? Nothing. But it's a little bit of a confirmation that in us is a natural intelligence that gets beat out of us. That we have to hold to that natural intelligence. It doesn't mean we have to be a hard head against all, all, re all reason. But, but when there's a, a foundation for your thoughts, and why I say go to evidence, find the evidence to support it, that way, no one can knock you down. When you get to the day, you, one day you get to present it or see it, or someone else concurs, a second witness, if you will, making a fact. You're there with that knowledge for you. On these so-called political things, everyone wants to reduce these. They're, they're handled politically, but they're not politics. You're dealing with the substance of your life in the land and what it produces. So it's not politics. That's what they've brought it into. They then bring commerce on top of it, which is a wrong as well, we but we get we get beat out of our senses with this imposition of a certain type of reality. That this uh, was kind of interesting to me. I didn't I don't know what I feel anymore about this stuff, but I'm saying you know how long ago would it have been if they'd have just listened to me? And I don't know how many other people were saying the same thing. And if, I don't even know if someone was saying it before I was saying it. I got a little bit of young world. I'm coming through, and people are trying to tell me stuff and stop making sense. That we're now. Now science, now NASA is now saying that there's a, well, it's a chemical factory up there on the moon. And I've told you the reason, part, part of the reason why it's likely that there's no moon, water on the moon is it's got no atmosphere to contain it. So it sublimates out into the, the space and the space is not so empty. And they're finding that out too. So anyway, you, you have rocks, you're going to have minerals, you're going to put energy to it, you're going to alter those minerals. They, they transform and they, they transmute, if you will, if those of you that will accept that. Uh, they, they do kinds of interesting things. Sometimes it requires biology to do the transmutation, and we get some of that in early so-called uh, sciences in, uh, in alchemy. But anyway, here's the lunar surface could act as a chemical factory that produces ingredients for water, making it ingredients for water, hydrogen and oxygen and electricity, folks. Now, making it easier to uh, future colonies on the moon to sustain themselves. And enough said. Point is, is that there's uh, things told to us, uh, denied and, 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 and put underneath the color of science, that are not true. And it, it takes, I can't say a hard head, uh, but it takes, you know, a real foundation to stay solid and, and, and hold to your conviction, if, if you will, on, on some of this this stuff. And where would we be sooner had we let's just say somebody lift, listened to the guy that would future behind the woodshed who's in school really doing stupendous work in chemistry to the point of being able to do information, have knowledge. I don't know where it came from. Knowledge that I wasn't even trained to understand. 
but I was just dialoguing, if you were talking, uh, bringing these things together uh, before. Had they listened to that kid early on, instead of denying the water for 30 years, and they're making excuses that they're just finding, if they just admitted they'd found the water, would that made a big difference? Well, I don't know that it would, except there wouldn't have been all that resistance, would it? And we would have been focusing more on maybe the water actually acts as, act, act as a signal to show us that there's other planets. See, they would have got to that a little bit sooner, wouldn't they? The point is we wouldn't have been resistant that it wasn't there. And we would have taken our mind and we would put our, applied our mind to the possibility that was foreclosed by science. And look how retarded we are, even if it's just a couple decades. Does it mean anything to me? No. But there is a, this, the interaction of the, rea of the creation with us does matter. And this is what these people that are coming to deny reality, these insane people denying reality, are bringing upon your life. It's an unreality, a UN reality, that will tell you there's no water in the universe when, in fact, it's probably everywhere. And we're finding that out, aren't we? But now the moon's a chemistry factory. Well, what what did they think, folks? You get energy from the sun that has no filtration whatsoever interacting with the molecules. Anyway, moving on. So we have water that's apparently going to be found everywhere. We're finding it everywhere in the, in the solar system now. I, I'm sure there's a couple of different mechanisms for it. The simple one for the moon was the sun and the rocks themselves. But we come to our planet and we're not such clean beings. And we found that we do kind of interesting things. And what's gone wrong with the green issue was that it started out as trying to stop the pollution we were killing, the literal pollution, not fabricating carbon as a pollutant, but the pollution that we were creating. And here we have that story. Along with the Green New Deal, you won't see anybody actually talking about how to solve anything that's an actual pollution. Remember, they made the Clean Water Act. They already agreed they want a little bit of pollution. So the government's kind of talking out of both sides of its face, isn't it, if it had one. The top, top ten most contaminated groundwater sites revealed in first major coal ash pollution study. Well, this is going to be coming after as well. The uh, They want to destroy this carbon uh, thing, or the coal. Uh, that's going to be the wrong answer as well. They're also not answering the, another problem that the, the stacks don't really produce that much uh, problems and the technology is around right now that they actually can clean the air cleaner than when it comes in, and that's, so there's evidence of that. I think it was an ash grove plant, a cement plant. Uh, they were being penalized for having mercury coming out of their stacks. And they're going, oh, mercury. No, well, guess what, folks? It was naturally occurring. No one thought in science to measure the intake air. And that company was beat, beat, and penalized until someone figured that out. Happened to be my colleague. And he said, listen, you better take the intake air because that's impossible. You can't be doing the, the scrubbing technology you're using and having having that kind of a, anything coming out, and you are. And they measured the intake air and found out the mercury was already in the air by nature. And they were causing ash grove to create plant. They were cleaning the air better than it and than it ought to be. Now that sounds kind of good, but what again? That would have been a takings to the production value, right? The point is that the science wasn't really looking at it at all. There was an agenda to shut down the so-called pollutants coming out. But nature creates its own. Now, man creates others. And I find it interesting how they'll, they'll research some and won't research another. You go try and bring a, a, a pollution mitigator, an absorbent, to the EPA, and they don't want to talk to you. We saw a little bit of that. Most of you all saw in general, saw that happen down there in, uh, when the Queen attacked the South with the with the BP petroleum spill. You, you watched bio mitigation, uh, mitigation attempts to be stopped by the bureaucracy. The, remediate, the bio remediation was available. They wouldn't use it in favor of producing money flows for chemistry, chemicals to kill the rest of it off. But we find now 10 most contaminated groundwater sites revealed in the first major coal ash study. Uh, the, an, an examination of the monitoring data available the first time concludes that 91% of the U.S. coal-fired power plants with monitoring uh, data are con contaminating groundwater with unsafe levels of toxic pollutants. Now, here's the next paragraph, and we'll stop. I'll just point out, remember I talked about the, the air containing the, the, the mercury that, they were being, that the company was 
blamed for creating, which actually was in the air because of the, gra the, the terrain allowed it in the air. The report found in this case that the found that the groundwater near 242 of the 265, 242 of the 265 plants with monitoring data contained unsafe levels of one or more of the pollutants in coal ash, including arsenic and no, a known carcinogen, and lithium, which is associated with neurological damage, among other pollutants. Folks, I don't know if you know about the earth, but arsenic's about everywhere, and lithium in different quantities. And so what you're not, so the point is, is that this, this is almost the same problem. They just measure this thing and they say there's increased levels. They don't tell you what might be there before. And I'm not saying there's not a problem. And I'm not saying that this cannot be mitigated. And I think it should be if it is a problem. But what we get is a, a, a tale by science and uh, earth justice coming in to make an issue. And it may not actually be the proper issue. In other words, you're going to be fighting the wrong foe and you're going to be harming people, punitively harming them ahead of time without actual proof. That's what your green ta that's what your cap, cap and trade does. That's what the green jobs bill. That's what the new green deal does. And I want to remind you, the green De the new deal of the 30s destroyed this country. It brought on all the administration that you see. So before you get into this warm and fuzzy idea uh, and look past it, even if you were even going to think you were opposed to the green part, but look at the New Deal. That was no good. That's no bed of roses, folks. That's why we're here today with the problems that we have. That's why you are and that you have been on the path uh, to a, a, a sustainable debt a fiat system. Now going to go digital, blockchain. All this stuff is going to come in to incorporate all this because of things like these uh, these groups like Earth Justice, the the use of what they started in the New Deal. The, again, they, they had to pack the, the Supreme Court right after that in order to get this to come on through. And they did a, you know, they do their political threats and it, it all worked. It all worked. And so I want to remind those of you that are in like, uh, persistent contrails and the, and the other problem here with the, they talk about in the coal ash, you know, we've been told that they're spraying this stuff as a, the scientists are now admitting they're spraying this in the sky or your so-called persistent contrails. It's a bunch of nonsense. These materials are in that also. So I don't know what groundwater they're talking about, but if they've been spraying above us and they want to start taking measurements, maybe they're telling us and admitting if we were to look on how they did that, we'd have proof that they're killing us. And it's, and it's, not, the, it's not the coal at all, maybe. Now, I'm not saying it's not there, and I'm thinking that how hard is it to fix, but this is what they get us down. They get believing, they get down on believing that the earth justice is these, these people that are NGOs and stuff, an environmental integrity project, are nothing of the sort. The environment they're talking about integrity is the one they're bringing upon you as an invasion. And these things that we need in life are, are because we need them in life. They don't like our life. They want us dead. And in the meantime, they want to be able to parasitically feed from us as we slowly or more quickly fulfill the terminal event that life is. And anyway, I, this stuff is right here to see. They're t telling you that your uh, groundwater is being poisoned. Nobody seems to do the test to find out what was in the water before. I understand this as well. Remember, I talked to you a long time ago, long many years ago. I was in a... Um, the public town meeting hall meeting. I was one of the one of the pres uh, speakers up there, answering questions. And we had an environmental um, group there wanting to beat us down about our mining. And uh, someone stepped up and said, "Well, I have arsenic in the water, and there's a miner up uh, up uh, up the creek." And I and I asked, "Where was it?" And they they told me where it was. I said, "Well, there, there's laws against pollution. Have you tried the authorities for your property rights and your rights to the water relative to the contamination?" that you've shown, you can prove, comes from the miner. And I said, because I have a question on you. Do you know what's in the water before you blame the miner? And they, she looked at me and said, well, no, we haven't tested the water. So why don't you go test the water, and if you can find the miners actually contributing to the arsenic, because that area you live in is full of arsenic, natural occurring arsenic. Maybe you, I agree, you need to go after the miner who's poisoning your water. But I have a suspicion you need to find out whether or not it's not coming from before him is how they're doing us down. They lie about what the cause is. They don't look about the natural, the reality of it. 
they just find and point the finger at you like the grim reaper and say you're the one killing everybody else and in fact it's all fraud it's a false witness you bring that back into vogue stop being that so uh, groundwater sites I want to tell you groundwater sites reveal the first major coal ash pollution study that the only two elements they say that were there are actually naturally occurring and so we I couldn't even tell you right now if that's a real problem or not. Uh, likely that there might, some of them might be but is again they're attacking the industry that provides your energy without which you likely will not be able to function and to replace it with green your costs it's it's already record i think it goes up 50 to 60 percent just for your energy when you do the green new deal so not only will they be punitive taxation and controls they're going to come out of your pocket 60 percent up to 60 cents 60 percent maybe more because once they have the control they have the monopoly more out of your pocket just to survive and that's how they're going to that's how this austerity actually works it's pulling from both sides so more more agency findings and misinterpretations and letting things go through again DOJ outs the other the 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 administration of the gold and silver market is showing us that the administration's not so cool we know that but it's beyond that you got to know that and then go prove it and then say move that proof against them so they don't continue to harm you uh, we find frank i just want to i guess more more to the fact to tell people uh, Frankenfish, U.S. approves importation of genetically engineered salmon, and it's getting to the point they have to met, they don't really have to label a lot of this stuff eventually. So, uh, word to the wise and watch out. I don't know how you're going to do that because I read another report: 28% generally, 28% of the fish you buy is all mislabeled, and if it's in a couple of uh, species of fish, it's mislabeled to the rates of up to 60 or 70%. So they're not they're not giving you the fish they tell you on the label. In this case. They'll be giving you a fish, maybe not telling you on the label. And a move that has been slammed by opponents, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has lifted an import alert that prevented controversial genetically engineered salmon from entering the United States market. And they talk about uh, eggs and all this other stuff. So uh, here, we, here we have agencies allowing these harms. And what it is, the balance that they're actually doing is against the record that you're, you're all not putting in against these opponents. They probably didn't put the correct record. Uh, that's why it's moving. It just moves along. When they know they don't have a record to define, defend, uh, or, or defend against, they just move ahead. And that's how you know you've done it wrong. That's how I've learned uh, in lots of ways if I've done it wrong. And that's how I learned how to go through the courts. When you, they kept moving along and you kept doing what you thought was supposed to happen without knowing what should have happened, they just keep moving along because you, you haven't done it right. Once you start doing it right, they, they, you start to put those sticks in the spokes and it becomes... Uh, very, very, very difficult for them to get on. But that's uh, another issue. Here, Frank and Fish is coming, folks. They're uh, go ahead and, and agree to it. I won't go through the story. Just let you know. You know, there's lots of scientists say it's safe to eat. I have so many questions about this. It's not even. It's not even funny. And and they're going to keep you, the disclosure from you as well. Why? Because it's the bottom line. And they can't find. You haven't brought the uh, the studies to show that it's harmful. That's why it's so important to get involved and make the record that it that it. If it is, or it is so potentially so, with numbers of potential harms, that they at least have to start taking a look at it before they put it in. It was like these impossible burgers and the concentration of a certain type of pro protein. They found out eventually people start reacting to it like a peanut allergy. Not like a peanut allergy. They react to it in the, against the soap pro protein like someone who's allergic to peanuts would do against peanuts. And so here we go. Frankenfish is coming uh, slowly and surely because no one is stepping against it. Uh, and and uh, and so I don't know what to say. And and so you know they say fish is good for your brain and uh, good like Grammy Mary says brain good brain food. But thank you Grammy for acknowledging. I hope I'm helping a ton to bring some of this stuff forward and make people think and more and act more to get involved. Now, there was a story that says the brain literally starts eating itself when it doesn't get enough sleep. And then I started to think I was going to talk a little bit about it. And I said, why would I do that? If you're not responsible to yourself enough to get enough sleep or make a situation where you are, then you aren't capable of hearing me anyway. And if you are, you don't need to hear this story. Keep doing what you've been doing. But that's the message. Your brain actually starts to eat itself. It's pretty interesting. Nature cleaning up the cleaning up what you don't use, I suppose. If you don't need it because you're going to be not sleeping, I guess it's going to go back and when it finally does get to sleep, start devouring itself. But those of you that are sleep deprived, you're probably not doing what I want. I'd ask you to do to help out anyway, right? 
I'm only speaking to people that have a, a solid brain. So moving on, uh, so, uh, there's something else that interferes with our intelligence and how we and our cognitive responses. And you know, somehow I, I don't judge a lot of this because I don't know what the real cause of people not def standing up and defending themselves, notwithstanding all the macho I hear. Uh, Association of physicians and surgeons strongly oppose mandatory vaccines. Now, be clear that they don't say not vaccines, but they say mandatory vaccine. So. Uh, Association of Physicians and Surgeons, those of you interested in vax, not vax, whatever, here's a, a group uh, that will lay out for you what they think, and they have some bit of an ex expertise. It's an association recognized by government. Uh, those of you that understand the process I've been saying and would just get involved, this is another uh, link for you to research down, to get the proof of what it says, pull them out, and start going against these uh, people, these insane people in the legislature, whether they be Republican, whether they be Democrats, whether they uh, support Trump or don't, whether they're deep state or not, you come with the fact of the experts say, even if it's counter, until you get to stave off this thing in the proper way in a written dialogue. You just don't write a letter of complaint. There's a certain order of things you bring. You have It's just like a court case but administrative, and, but you do it by letter. And you don't have to go on and on. You can say one Pot one meaningful sentence supported by one meaningful piece of evidence, and that would make a letter that would make one piece of paper, and you would you would send that to someone, and then you'd watch whether or not they regarded and gave meaningful interpretation and air to it. And if they didn't, you get to try and shut it down. And I say try because you're walking back into into a uh, an injunction. But if you have your facts right, as I as I can point out over and over, you bring your title to the fight. That, and there's no, and there's an exclusion against all in all, everyone's trespass. You've won before you start. It's not, like I said, it's not an issue. And we learn to find those issues, those points, those Achilles heels very quickly. So, for those of you, it's not just some. Oh yeah, mandatory vaccines are bad. No, there's a, there's, it's not just that. Do you understand what they're saying? They are actually pointing to some other things. But uh, this mandatory where they shut out your choice and consent, see, is what they're after. So those of you that, that complain about not giving your consent, you don't give your consent by interjecting this fact that they're taking it. And if you don't, they don't care. And they won't care. And they don't care. I mean, generally, you see what they'll, they're willing in the in the face of a reality. They're they're willing to make wrong decisions, as we find the DOJ attacking somebody because they made scams in the market, in the silver market, and yet the ad administrative agency over that sees nothing. Fascinating. Perfect. That's for us. Perfect in the t in this dire time. That's perfect. Another thing interesting. We're we're going along and. You know, they can go ahead and put these biological things, these agencies put these biological things together. You know, that's the Biodiversity Treaty, remember? Everyone wants to think these endangered species and things under the Biodiversity Treaty is something we're trying to save the world. No, we're trying to, we're going to transform it with this new technology, this new technocratic future. Under the Biodiversity Treaty is genetically modified food. Genetic modified anything. It was done way back in 92, folks. If you think this is recent stuff, I don't know why anybody doesn't talk about this stuff. This is not even hard to figure out where this is going. And it's going there. And so you're going to have Frankenfish. And you're going to have bioengineering in your vaccines. And then you're going to have these associations say, well, well mandatory now, that's just something else. And there's so many other questions about that. And they do bring up the idea of consent. So it's important. And if it's important, you can't be giving it up in your silence. Otherwise, it's taken. And so they have a thing that they do to control you as you're having life. And then I've been explaining to you that the, the interference with life is before they even have recognized life. And you hear recently New York, which is becoming another pivot point of uh, why watch them, because watch, you're watching the future. The you watch this Acacia or whatever her, this this young hatch pre hatchling that's that got out of her shell is doing in New York what they're bringing up and what she's forcing down your your throat underneath a feel good it's all coming out of New York right now they're they're the, the go to place for uh, really the future and they they have now uh, you know you can be have a 
two seconds to two minutes to birth in a fetus and kill it. Uh, this is that you know, going on in New York. Well, it's, I find it interesting on the other side that where the legal couldn't recognize uh, a, a baby until it was born, Alabama court recognizes aborted fetuses as a person with rights in a landmark pro-life victory. And so to me, looking at this, I said, uh, relative to the injections and the mandatory this and all that other stuff in the imposition, the baby has a, now, in Alabama at least, uh, has a right that as an estate is enforceable. Which I'm finding pretty fascinating. Uh, I haven't had a chance to go back and look and see the logic behind how they do that. But see, it's a legalism. They're not really dealing with the baby. They're dealing with a trust. They're dealing with the establishment of trusts. And yet in Alabama here, there is an, you can, you after the fact, let's say in this case the father who didn't want the board, the baby aborted that the mother decided to, went back and sued the mother for the for aborting the, the, the fetus, uh, and apparently the life contribution it could do. And this is an interesting, my, see, I look at it just a little differently. I don't get too wrapped up in all the, whatever, the beliefing systems and all. I'm looking really at the system underlying this, how it gets and does this. It's looking more and more and more to how to create things it can decide other things over that gets people fighting. And uh, being able to do this is, is one of the things. They say it's a, a pro-life victory. Uh, and a, how is it pro-life actually when the baby is dead? And so I don't, again, I think these are mispromoted for a reason. And the, the, the thing I'm looking at is how, look at how they're taking and adjusting life to control and or give the system ability to integrate, engage with it all in order for essentially to make controls. If it's going to be a life uh, early on, then it's also going to be when we can't when we can't stop these punitive damages. It can be taxed too. It can be treated too. And so I'm not so sure about this as being a good thing. And this is what I started to wonder. You know, we really have to think clearly on a lot of this stuff. We really have to take a step back of our own feelings and say, what's the real dynamic under? It? What's the cause and effect? What's the What's going to be the give and take about how they do this? And what are the world I see coming on, this is not necessarily the good answer that it is. Yes, I like to see that there's some protections, but it's what the consequence ends up being, actually. Because this didn't wasn't a pro-life victory. This is just a threat of future legal action that could tax your life some more, or find benefit to one or the other, and it puts us at odds against each other as well. We, we should have had a principle before we got started. We shouldn't have had to worry about the state making the decision. Again, this is just other legalisms, isn't it? Because we have a live, given it over. We have stopped our own responsibility. And this is what the, you don't, uh, and this is what they're trying to steal in this new deal. They, they make it sound like you have no responsibility. So I see at that point, this is why this is being done. It's not to save the fetus, because it's not saved. It's just to cause more division against us men and women, uh, the potentials of an agency now coming in, who has what, the tug, and, uh, the, 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 the tug of war that goes on, uh, the, then the state steps in as a so that, uh, the, the, the father of everybody. Uh, you don't even understand you're a slave at that point, but so you're fighting because you think you have a right. It's all being done so that there's an overhand, an overhead uh, control of all, of all kinds of things I can't even fathom. I don't know what these people are going to think about doing when they have that kind of control. But this Green New Deal is an extension of that. The division, you don't have your own self. You have no property. You have no rights. You're subject to the, the, the Borg. It's all hive mind or else you'll be penalized. And so I'm going to go back a little bit to this Green New Deal. That got into me a little bit that nobody responded. Nobody wants to defend themselves about something that's internationally destructive. It's not just affecting someplace over there. This is global. This cap and trade will tell you that these uh, these uh, stakeholders will tell you that they are working to enforce an order on earth, that the health of the earth, in any one jurisdiction, who has that kind of power? Who has that obligation over the earth? 
It shows you how insane these people, how grandiose they think they are. But uh, I got this article just to remind us of the Green New Deal. Uh, it's the wrong way to go, but I'm going to present it as a link anyway. Nine key questions about the Green New Deal. It's all set up as a promotion of the Green New Deal. You're seeing a lot of that go on. Um, they go through and they try to dismiss uh, the the opponents. So I guess I should read a little bit of that. If you've heard a lot recently about the Green New Deal but still aren't quite sure what it is, you are not alone. After all, it has been trumpeted by its supporters as the way to avoid planetary destruction. Tell that to the giant media. And vilified by opponents as a socialist plot to take away your ice cream. So it's bound to be somewhat confusing. We're here to help. We're from the government mouth. Uh, we're the propaganda machine, and we're here to help. So you see, they vilified by the opponents of socialist plot to take away your ice cream, to demean the problem. It's not actually socialist. It's this psycho-social, fascio thing, a communo marxi fascio thing, whatever the heck it's going to turn into. It's way beyond communitarianism, which deals with the individual relative to just the, the Borg. It, it, this deals with the overall what they're doing. It's not just socialist. It's not. They try to call Ocasio socialist, but the Green New Deal is way beyond any socialism. And it's not here just to take your ice cream. They do that so they think to demean what they're actually doing. They're here to control you and punitively penalize you because you just exist. And if you don't get any, if you get confused, just remember what I just said. And if you think I'm joking, it's just my words. The punitive came from their own documentation. It came from a legislative council who has educated in environmental impositions before a committee at the state, a state legislature that said, when asked, is this punitive? And she said, yes, and we know it's punitive. It's not me making this stuff up, folks. I don't just talk to, to be uh, sensational. They intend to be harmful to you. And the committee chairman didn't blink an eye. He's one of them. And you all sit quiet. Well, you all didn't even know about it, did you? But that's what's going on, right? They never stop. So here we have, I want to go through and tell you what the Green New Deal, the first paragraph is tries to push down the issue. They try to limit your thoughts. They're here to help. They're here to help you buy into the Green New Deal. Remember, the New Deal was no good uh, when you look at it, and the Green New Deal is an attachment, a global attachment on what the New Deal started. Don't ever forget that. Remember, they debased your currency 40% during the New Deal. And they claimed that that saved you from the Depression. The Depression was brought on because of that, to get to enforce that, and then administration. And now, I want to bring on something. I didn't really talk about that. I brought up the uh, bad, uh, it's a bad link if I wanted to sell you on something. I wouldn't have sent you over here because it's going to tell you and try and sell you on all the bad points that they're promoting. But that's okay. You're going to have to work out your mind there. Why I brought the reminder of the Green New Deal up, because it started to come up with another thing. They're really pushing this thing hard. This next story isn't really what I want to talk about. What I want to talk to you, they're doing the process right in your face. They're doing this alternative dispute resolution consensus process right in the national window. Everybody's watching this process being done to them, and they're not going to address it. Well, maybe some of you might if you listen to me and take it in heart and go start telling people. Bloomberg now, listens, now listen, it's in the title. So we talk about the Green New Deal. This is that cap and trade green jobs nonsense. It's all climate change related as well, and it's all pu pu putting the sustainable development. You realize you hardly hear sustainable development spoken of in any of this stuff. You will see climate change. But now Bloomberg, as the title will tell you, and I just said alternative dispute resolution is the method of their method and weapon of destroying you, up pops this little report here. Bloomberg launches alternative to the Green New Deal. Now, the process of alternative dispute resolution is to fabricate a crisis and then create the alternatives to solve the crisis, none of which you have any input, then create a meeting to take those alternatives and sell you to buy into one of them, the outcome of which perfects the, the crisis, 
that they want to the future to the future they want, and they claim you did input. And if you don't show up, they claim that they have a right to do that for you. Silence is consent, no matter how it is gotten. Bloomberg launches an alternative to the Green New Deal. So this is alternative dispute resolution on a national scale. And the second alternative is now brought into the list for you to choose from. It won't matter to anybody that both of them are the destruction of this nation. Because you're going to choose one. Because none of you is going to step up and say they're both felonies. They're both treasonous. They're both violations of these things. Whether you make the list and shut it all down. There's now a standard going right now. I'm watching it happen. It's right in this title. Bloomberg launches his alternative. Acacia, whatever her name is, the, the hatchling, pre-hatchling, she's offered her version, the alternative, for the Green New Deal. They're going to get the Green New Deal. It's just going to be of how they, whose plan they can get through, get everybody to buy in or not respond to buy into. It's right here. Michael Bloomberg will not run for president. Well, that Okay, everyone gets to put down their shields. No, this guy's a danger. This guy's an, a, a rogue uh, invader. The, that was the main outtake from the business and philanthropist op-ed for Bloomberg the other day. But more important outtake was his announcement of a new climate change initiative, Beyond Carbon. So here he comes with a new, better idea. It's all an alternative to the same New Green Deal, which is a new climate change initiative. You see, it's all the same. doesn't matter what the name is. We're going to make this one better for you. to. Oh, wait, this one next is better than the first one. What it ends up doing is it launches the same destruction of your nature, of your nation, in different ways. So if, you, if you're trying to get a handle on what I talk about when I just use terms like alternative dispute resolution or consensus, they're now going to hand it to you in the national news. They're doing it to you right now as they bring on one alternative over the other. Let you choose on all the alternative, any alternative which you choose, and do not bring the actual law to counter to show that it's a crime against you. You, you keep quiet. You're going to buy one of the things, the, 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 the snake oil that they're selling. It's, they're, they're not, none of them, none of them are beyond saying that they attach to the Green New Deal. They're all going to push climate change initiatives, which are the weapon uh, to blame you, and they're all going to be punitive. But you're going to be given the flavors at Baskin Robbins Alternative Dispute Resolution Core, you're going to be given those as the only choices, and you aren't going to be sharp enough to create the one that needs to happen and counter every other one that's been brought forward. You won't do it. Why do I know that? Why am I so arrogant to believe so? Not one of you contacted me last week at all about this very thing that they are doing to you in your face. What I have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis for at least the last 10 years and in the coordination of comments and dealing with the counties is happening to you right in the news media right now. They're bringing every alternative. You're going to see some more come out. And then there's going to be a choice that will be brought by consensus. The same consensus that the bipartisan agreement to close your public lands was brought by. What is the main thing thereafter? How to tax you. How to gain the funds to be a parasitic draw. Next story. How congressional appropriations can be leveraged as first step towards the Green New Deal. This is from the CFR.org. Let me just, I just read the title, folks. Congressional appropriations, Congress, the House, is where the money goes. They're in control of the purse right now, these Democrats. These people that are not just socialists, right? These are treasonous bastages. And now we know the GOP is helping them. That they want the appropriations are leveraged. What have I told you in our lawsuit that triggered our ability to sue, but was leveraged funding to bring forward these agendas underneath the color of authority? The word appropriations and leveraged are in the same title. They're doing this right in your face. They're telling you the House is sitting on the purse 
to bring forward the appropriation to force the New Deal on you. It's all consistent with the method and in on the same subject matter. Nothing is changing here. Talk about, I mean, they tell you again, also, this is a guest post by Benjamin Silliman, Silliman, Research Associate for Energy Security and Climate Change at the Council of Foreign Relations. It's, there's no energy security when you get rid of your energy base, folks. There's no energy security when you get punitively charged for existence and then get charged again the increased cost because you got rid of your energy base. And then all on this thing, this term called climate change, which is a fraud. Where's the security in that? And once you, that's just, again, subtext to the title. I hope you, I don't know what you think when I talk about like this. Maybe you're not listening. I don't know. It's that fast. I don't know what you all think about when you read this stuff. They're telling you they're coming to take you down. They're coming to hurt you. Punitive. Folks, look the word up. Consider it's done as a sentence after conviction on a properly uh, presented case by evidence under witnesses that would show that they had been fined for independent witnesses after you've been told and given notice of the harm and before that you were given notice how to avoid the harm. None of which has gone that there that have been done that they're already blaming you and causing you to have punitive damages. You think you're innocent? I just told you you're not. It's not me telling you. I'm telling you how they're telling you. You are not innocent of anything. You exist. Remember, you're dealing with insane people. Don't try to rationalize this. You're going to have to deal with it. And they got the purse strings now. And what does that mean? Oh, fiat. This, this. They're going to get what they need, okay? However you want to deny it, they're going to get what they need. Nobody is going to be there to stop it. Why do I say that? Because I'm so arrogant? No. None of you sent me an email wanting to know what I knew a little bit about how to stop this thing. And here we have the alternatives coming some more. If you don't think this is a setup right here, I'm showing you, they're showing you. I'm going to just identify it for you if you don't see it. All these disparate news has always come together. These notices come together with something. These are all coming at the same time. The alternatives are being built. Now an interesting twist on the alternatives that you might even consider, oh, let's stop the green thing. We're going to jump over here is being offered all at the same time. Government is ours. Now, this is going to guide all you, all you patriots. This is the thing that's kind of got me. But you look at who's underneath this. They're not really patriots when you figure out what their words are may not match how the mechanisms, the mechanisms they will impose will be. And that's a question because they're, they're not really being forthright. But here's an alternative for you. Well, you don't want the Green New Deal. How about we just say, hey, government is ours. Actress Jennifer Lawrence bolsters plan to save America. Aren't, aren't all these other all these uh, in, insane people trying to save save the earth and save this and save that and secure this? So we have a problem right off the bat, but here's the alternative. It's given to you as a choice going into an election period by which you'll be looking and judging if you elect or work to believe you elect and vote. And I'm not talking now the parties. The, I'm talking about locally. You'll be looking and being mind-controlled about how things work and get your mind around some of this stuff, thinking that you're going to come up and get behind a cause. It's going to be some saving America because you know it's so bad, and they put it so bad, and you have to save it. I mean, otherwise you realize, you finally realize it's coming to kick your door in. You better do something. But here's another alternative to the Green New Deal. It's to invoke the, the government's yours. Well, if the government was yours... You wouldn't be having this problem, but you do. So, word to the wise, but here's the alternative coming, all at the same time, to be promoted as a movement. A newly formed political campaign seeks to fix the U.S. political system by adopting anti-corruption laws in many states, which will then take them to a federal level, circumventing opposition by Congress. Sounds like a neat plan. That's exactly the way you would do it if we were smart, uh, intelligent people looking to stop an oppression from the federal. But that's where it stops. Start reading about it. It sounds good. I had to read through quite a bit. I had to actually go start researching who these people were. And you'll find out that they're all coming out of academia. They're not really so bad, but they're not actually really good on the implementation side. 
And nobody resorts to existing constraints. They want to change something. They want to, and, uh, but they are doing something else. Remember, I told you with this corruption coming on, and they want to talk about anti-corruption, but you have to look at what they're looking at. It's not anti-corruption enough, actually, because what I've been telling you, we need accountability by the people in the offices that the law says is there, as far as the accountability, but we're not getting that you're going to have to make laws now to counter all the insanity you see coming down. But guess what? You're not actually in the seat of that decision, are you? So they've really taken the baseball bat and they're ready to club you with it. This is an initiative to create a system in the states of laws that go for anti-corruption. You're going to find lots of support for that. At that point, I'm agreeing with it. That's what I've been saying. Make laws that allow accountability. They don't respond to it that way in this, but this is a lead. The point is, this is an alternative. And as I said, these alternatives aren't actually supported in the law when you get deep enough. But it's an alternative you can choose. And if you don't have a brain better than the one that's working and planning against you, they will win. You'll give in and choose one of these inferior plans instead of putting up the one that ought to be. And a lot of it, as I've said to a lot of people, don't forget in your comment as an alternative to their alternative to just follow the law. How about if we do that? Put that as the alternative. What does that do? Tactically... In the, in the comment, it explains right off by its, by its presence, says the other alternatives that they're being promoted are not in the law. Then you become the expert, if you will, your own expert, to say what the law would be, which is really just the black and white. You get to be the one who understands it and says, what you're offering violates these things. And they're the real objective basis. Why? Because it's all this alternative stuff does not come by way of anything constitutional, by statute, ordinance, policy, law, anything like that. Their own policy um, warnings will tell you that. Their own documentation explaining what they do tells us that. And so you're sitting in the, you grab the baseball bat back just by saying, how about if we follow the law first? And I'll hear uh, come, come at the law. Yeah, well, because you think that it's not being imposed on those that took the oath to follow it. That's not my problem. That's your problem. And that's anybody's problem who comes to that attitude. Oh, there's no law. Well, it's because we haven't forced it. We we're supposed to force it into effect. No, instead we take these alternatives that are the setup for the takedown. They fall short. They fall aside. They don't do what they're supposed to do relative to an objective basis that we've dismissed on our own. Why? Because we haven't seen the effect of it all our lives. And I'm saying it doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that it's not there. It's like I was just looking at a discussion. It was actually a, a judge, so-called, never declared how he had jurisdiction, said that what he was reading was uh, pseudo-legalisms. What was interesting was talking to a title case, and the title was not a legal title. It was the equity side of the title. It wasn't talking legalisms. We are talking beneficial rights on, on equity, in equity. And so the judge is explaining how either he is completely incompetent, not in jurisdiction, but in knowledge, or he's attempting to get rid of the property, and he's placing it in somebody else. See, the word legal relative to title is only half of a whole title. And if you don't understand that, you miss the trick. And this is how they're doing it. This is how they do it to us. We don't understand the language. It's not because it's beyond us. It's because we've never taken the time and made it important to understand and realizing though that was the weapon they would be using against us to come and steal our stuff. And then they brought in the concept of alternative. See, that legal pseudo-legalism is an alternative to the actual intent of the, of the, of the uh, remedy. And a so-called judge, a bar member did that. A torn to turn that case without lawful right. That's a trespass on the case. The guy's a criminal right there. And does anybody understand what I'm talking about? I would hope some of you do. But my last response last week to trying to help this out against us, stop these alternatives from coming that we're going to choose the wrong one or not choose and let them choose, I don't see it happen. It didn't happen last week. I doubt that it's going to happen this week. Despite the fact in this alternatives that we're having, and what I just told you, why don't you just present the law as an alternative to their alternatives within that own system? You can put an alternative suggestion. 
Don't just complain. Don't just show how much you know about the law. Put in the alternative. Like, just follow the law is one of them. We follow through and we see, well, we talk about this climate, this and that and the other, and uh, carbon taxation, and yet, what is the, if you actually look inside what they're doing and they want to stop the carbon, uh, let's just give it over, the insanity is correct, the carbon is our nemesis, we want to stop carbon. Would you go in and mine a whole lot of stuff to make these so-called green, non-green, uh, artificially uh, underpowered uh, alternatives? Or would we go to that? We'd look at the most powerful thing we have and make that the thing that we, we produce to make our energy that's not carbon producing is an alternative. And that came up as well. In the face of all these alternatives, out of Forbes no less, we don't need solar and wind to save the climate. And it's a good thing too. And this gentleman goes through the analysis on how nuclear is non-carbon producing and would satisfy all of it and wouldn't have all the losses and the dirty pollution and the carbon creation that all the other sources would have if you actually embrace a zero-carbon environment, which is death to everybody. But does who cares? These people are insane. And so when I'm asking you to comment, you pull all these things together, offer the alternatives that are not offered, and then you get to place what in the process? It's in the agencies now by the record that you've made that they have to show how your alternative is not practicable. And so one of the first ones you put down is follow the law. How are they going to defeat how it's going to be practicable to evade the law? Secondly, in this case, how is it with this study, and you can go follow this guy's study and go do your own. It doesn't take long. Find out, well, hey, your alternative, if you want to go carbon zero, you didn't utilize nuclear. Why isn't that even in your New Deal? Well, that starts to expose what? That the New Deal is a cover for your destruction. It's a New Deal. It's a green New Deal. But they're going to destroy you through green means like they did back in the New Deal of the 30s and they debased your, your currency, your, your money, your monetary system by 40% overnight. This is now going to tax you with a fiat you can never escape. This is like the final uh, connection. And then I guess there could be more oppressions. But for us and what we think about rights, that to do this, they have to take away, they have to stick all of your property and you in commerce as a pollution. And you're going to let them do it. And I, am I arrogant to say that? Am I judging you all? No, because last week I got zero responses. Now, here's how, no, in the face of all this, even though you put your alternatives and, and you at least give yourself an issue, you have an issue in your mouth about, well, if they want to go completely carbon, the New Deal has to regard, get rid of all the wind and the solar. and got to, We just got to do nuclear if that's really the op object. Wow, that's a, that's going to be an interesting uh, injunction that you go pull, pull off that they didn't look meaningfully at nuclear and cause it to be the answer where you can show all the other ones are just as polluting, if not worse, if carbon was the problem. But they're going to get this thing through. And I said, focus in on New York. You're watching the future unroll out there in quite a number of things. And just breaking as I run to the, to the, uh, to the uh, broadcast, this is what you folks in states' rights and you folks that have phones and iPhones and think that uh, ledgers and, and, and digital uh, ledgers are going to be cool and that all this surveillance state is going to be cool and you think this punitive damage is coming down on you through your res lack of resistance, your silence to this new deal. I don't care what color they come up with it. They could make it rainbow colored. That, that would actually help a lot of you its and zits out there, but they can make it rainbow colored. It won't matter. It's punitive. And this is what a state is willing to do and this is only tied to people that are located in a place that their land is. The state slaps New Yorkers fleeing under crippling taxes with audits to punish them, to make them pay. Isn't that civil rights? Isn't that punish and pay? When you're trying to flee, the state's going to come in and punish you. I've been telling you about driving around in your autonomous car. I've been telling you about your phone. You can identify where you're at. Under carbon credits, you can't flee. You can't hop around either. You can't get away. The state is already telling you in New York that they're, they're leading this whole thing off. And if you look at the history of New York and how the laws, the Bar Association, and well, the other associations that came out that becomes the Bar, 
across hip hop across the United States, you'll see that or New York's been an interesting place to go back and look at what they did and how they developed stuff for. They're like model things that end up like a cancer coming around across the the, the country. Uh, state is going to slap New Yorkers trying to flee from crippling taxes with audits to punish them. What happens when your whole life is digitally uh, digitally uh, creditized? Not only is New York imposing crushing taxes on its wealthier residents, remember this whole thing brings everybody to the bottom. It, it is chasing them down when they try to escape. Remember my idea about going across the across the road, uh, the intersection, and your light turns yellow to red, and before you reach the other end, they've got through, you go identified, and they look at your bank account, and you violated the law, and they find out your bank account's a little bit too, maybe your social credit's way low, and you don't have enough money to pay for the fine, and a hellfire comes out of that drone that's been following you around. State slaps New Yorkers fleeing under crippling taxes, you disabled, crippled people, with audits to punish them. And pay when your when your whole life is in their hands, folks. What do you expect the future is going to look like? They're telling you with a 2.3 billion bi budget budget deficit. Remember CAFR? They're lying when they mention the CAFR. Go mention. Go look at the CAFR, folks. Okay, there's plenty of money sitting there. They don't even need it from you. However, uh, this is what you all believe because you're silent. A defense, a, def a deficit in the budget can't pay his bills. So he's going to come after you, the knee, and break your knees, and cripple you some more, punish you, your civil rights. Andrew Cuomo called a this is a this budget is as serious as a heart attack. The state's tax collectors are seeking a bolder approach in capturing fleeing residents. And understand the word residents there. The Democratic governor placed the blame in the hole in his state treasury on President Trump. Of course, claiming the administration's Tax Cuts and Jobs Act adversely affected his state. So he's going to come after you. Not the guy under the cupboard, you. Crippling, and they're still going to get you. They're going to track you down as you cripple off, and they're going to track you down. I want you to put yourself in a digital world in the future underneath carbon taxation putatively you're going to and tell me how you're going to escape that. There is no escape, folks. Keep silent. There's no escape. They'll come and hit you hard. You hear it's audits. Remember, they always tack damages behind that. They put you in contempt, and now you're underneath the thumb of a judge somewhere under civil side, and you can't stop that one. So they're willing to come after you, crippling you and coming after you. think that you, you're worried about people who can't, stage four cancer being invaded by their hospital room, or you little old ladies that get run down. They don't care, folks. You, they're gonna, you, if you're not crippled, they'll cripple you. And they'll still come after you. And this is this new deal. I want you to rationalize for yourself and explain to me if it's not. Once you are the agent Causing the harm to the earth, the Green Deal of which puts punitive taxation and obligations and duties on you, where are you going on the earth to escape that? And when they find you, they don't even have to come out as the law enforcement. They'll get their son to come and shoot you. It's just the military. It's just the job. It's just something they got to do. And here's the proof of that. Cop sons shoots and kills unarmed man in broad daylight on video, folks, shotgun, and they don't find him guilty of nothing. They don't charge him with nothing. So this is like a new one even on me. I figured the cops are going to be doing it. No, no, the cop's sons get to do this too. We all know about the corruption. Where are you, folks? This has got to stop. You're going to have to stop this. Why? Because it's ongoing now. It's bad doesn't stop itself. Are you getting that, folks? I mean, go to talk more. You got the link. You can go see it. You can see what's going on. I look at the video. The guy, even if I didn't know anything more, having a shotgun out in the middle of the street doesn't look like any threat actually is going on. To have a sh any gun pointed at you is uh, menacing or endangerment. And then the guy gets shot and killed. And this guy who does this doesn't get any, even. 
even the initial charges of pointing a gun at somebody without actual cause. I don't even have to go to the manslaughter part of it, even if he might have been tried to justify and needed to defend that. But I know of a case of a minor was defending his, def, literally defending himself and his mining claim from someone who was attacking him. Uh, the guy got so close as to grab his shotgun that pulled the, actually pulled the trigger. When the guy pulled the the shotgun, he pulled the trigger out of the from the miner holding the gun and blew his own arm off. And the miner's now well, he might be out now. He was in jail, went to jail for seven years. But I see this kind of stuff, and I say, folks, where are you? I've been telling you. It's out here. Now the sons of cops think they're smart enough to be a cop and are now showing us that they can kill with impunity. I don't want to say the guy's guilty of anything, but that, after seeing what the courts will do with an accident gone bad, with someone who invaded somebody else and threatened him, but he got close enough to grab his own, grab a guy's gun, it would have been like in this case, the kid in the street that got shot grabbing the guy's shotgun and pulling on it. And our miner went to, to prison over that, defending his own property. If you don't think there's a problem with this whole picture, this comes a little bit harder that a cop's son, the military officer's son, does not even suffer a question. Is your future? If you think the military here is here to help you, Rape charges dropped against the cops who admitted to sex with teens that they kidnapped. No charges. You're a military soldier under the Libra Code. You will not suffer anything. Do they rape people in Iraq and Syria? Do soldiers do that? Do we, what Abu Ghraib? Do we see all that, folks? Do, you, do they get hit for that? No. Same thing here with your police. It's a military operation. And so we're going to keep silent to all this stuff, the evidence, and notice is here of what's going on. Thousands of cases tied to the use in cops who murdered innocent couple could be exonerated because those cops, a couple of them, they say, uh, two bad apples, I guess the whole barrel should be considered, they'll say it's not two bad apples, no good. Thousands of innocent people got, got, were into the, sucked into the system without a check and balance. And then I heard about the Achille, Achille, I guess it is, the Chile Police Department suspended under uh, until next week over its uh, invasion of a house. The problem with that one, they actually had a warrant, folks, that was good. And it was good because the judge didn't check that it may not have been. You have no protection. You have no, the military in times of war is not going to be found guilty. And I don't know why you all are sitting quiet. If you can't even do a letter like I asked you just to go to an agency to stop something that's to be punitive damage against your whole entire life, I guess maybe you're not going to stand up to this. You'll just be walking down the street, let some guy jump out of a truck and shoot you and get away with it. Thanks for being here today. I hope something I said uh, sparked your interest enough to get involved, folks. This is the only way this thing kind of works its way out as we go back and uh, defend ourselves in the proper way. And it is going to take a proper way because anything else is not going. Not, not, I've not found it to work. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and all the support work and things you do. Um, UCY.tv, uh, normalization of ignorance, sound minds over there on YouTube accounts. Thank you for reposting all this. I do appreciate all that. And anybody else that's sending out the Twitters, I, I respond to the Twitters by resending that out through the week. So appreciate all that you do to put the word out there, folks. Uh, again, uh, part, of, part of me is an optimist, but it's not looking good, and I'm hoping that some of us uh, more set, step up and, and really take control. It, it can be taking control, of, and that's the reason why I'm saying it. Otherwise, I would not. I would not even offer that. I'll be here next week. Tech tips or nature will. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Can
of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 